So this presentation is um, intended to help understand some of the metrics displayed in hydrometric um, uh, graphs. This is data from the Seymour Station provided from the Water Office, a federal um, bureau um, that provides uh, water data, discharge data across the country. So Seymour Station, here's the station number, and the data is focusing on 2013 data. What you're seeing in this first graph is daily discharge values. So 2013 data is represented in red. And what you're seeing, for instance, is that the peak occurred late September, early October. So that was the highest flow for that year for a daily average value. Um, and then a couple, few other notable peaks occurred uh, early March and through March and early April. This data, e each month is then averaged. So the data for June is averaged here and will then be displayed in this monthly discharge graph. What is also being used is the um, extremes or the maximum values as well as the minimums, although it's hard to pull out what the minimum was here exactly, are then displayed um, on the annual extremes graph. Now, what's different between the annual extremes and the peak flow is that the peak flow is effectively an instantaneous measurement, whereas the annual extreme graph is showing daily maximums for each year, but daily maximums are a compiled value for that whole day. So now that we've walked, I've walked you through this, I'm going to show you what we can see in the um, Water Office um, website. So let's start with our daily discharge graph. Let's start with the graph that we've got displayed on the left of the screen. Takes a little bit of time to load this. Okay, so for this is the same graph that you're seeing on the left-hand side of the screen. So here on the um, y-axis is discharge, discharge in meters cubed per second. And on the y-axis is um, uh, monthly values, but in between are daily values. Okay, so that's where you get this information from. This is, again, the Water Office website. Okay, but now wanna, let's look at the table format. And I think this is where you'll start to see the linkages between these different tables. So what you see is that for every day there is a value. For 2013, January 1st, through 31st, there is one value. And what they draw out is the maximum for each month. So what we saw um, in late September, let's go to September. September's here. I'm moving my... So the maximum value, can I get that? Ooh, here's the maximum. I'm just gonna grow this for a second. Okay, the maximum value for September was 127 meters cubed per second. And effectively, this was the maximum daily value for the whole year. So that value would then get reported in the annual extremes graph. What you also see is um, means for each month. So this month of June that I was talking about over here, let's look for the month of June. June is over here, and for the month of June, the mean was 12.5. So this is approximately what you're seeing in the graph, not approximately, exactly what you're seeing in the graph. If we could line this up, my arrow's probably a little bit off, but 12 and a half meters cubed per second was the mean value for that month. Okay, I'm gonna shrink this one more time. And we're going to go one more time back to these tables because there's a couple things that are worth noting. So if we now go to the annual extremes, I just have to hit apply, get this thing rolling, waiting, it's waiting, be patient. Okay, but while the annual extremes, what I want to point out is here what you get is for each year, each calendar year, you get a value, value in meters cubed per second, the maximum for that year. So that value we were looking at earlier that occurred on September 30th, if we go scroll down to 2013, 
Exactly. September 30th, 2013, 127 meters cubed. That was the annual extreme value. But remember, that's based on averages. So this isn't the type of information that you would want to use when you're trying to find out sort of peak or real um, peak flows or flows that could cause uh, sort of a, a blowout, let's just say. So instantaneous flows are the peaks. This is slightly different because it is not um, an average. Let's see. Apply. And so what you now see is, let's go down to 2013, is that in 2013, the peak occurred on September 29th at 9.20 p.m., and the peak was 141 meters cubed. So this is a single measurement. Remember, multiple measurements in one day are used to calculate daily discharge values. Okay, so I hope that walkthrough sort of helps you understand what's going on in these graphs, and reading these tables, how that can help you clarify what each of these metrics means.